Hi everyone, thank you um, Dr. Patricia Daly and I just want to say before I start that um, it's really obviously important to have discussions, debates like this and um, rather than to just talk about the problems and you know it's actually a good idea to, to have things like this and really address them and try and find solutions so I'm really grateful to be here and humbled by some of the speakers that are here today. Um, so I'm probably just going to start off um, talking about my experience, where I'm from and where I live in London. Um, and um, identify some of the causes, what actually, what the causes behind the riots were b amongst the different groups. Then um, try and kind of tie into a, p a historical perspective and then hopefully provide um, a few ideas and suggestions for solutions and how to move forward. So, um, right, so um, I was born in North Middlesex Hospital in Enfield and grew up in Tottenham. So respectively the places of escalation and in inception of the London riots this August. My experience of the riots is considerably different to those of my age and, and from my area. Like many of us here today, the closest I got to seeing the riots um, was actually on the news and waking up and falling asleep to the sound of sirens um, for the duration of the commotion. In many ways, I'm proud to say that, that neither my family, friends nor I were, were, took part in the, in the looting, the vandalism and the inexcusable accounts of violence on innocent, on innocent bystanders. In other ways, I'm, I'm not proud to say I wasn't part of the original motives behind it. Um, the movement was clearly fuelled by more than, than violent, opportun violent opportunists looking for trainers and laptops, um, no matter how the British media portrayed it. We cannot deny that looting happened, um, we cannot deny that the looting happened, um, neither that local businesses and homes were wrecked. Before that, however, I, I believe there was a glimpse um, of steps towards some sort of social change. There were evidently two, evidently two groups, or I'd probably argue three actually, three groups um, involved in the riots. There were the protesters, um, there were the rioters, and there were the looters. And I think what makes it difficult sometimes to pinpoint the causes and the, and the underlying um, reasons for the riots is the motives kind of change between those three groups. Both, or all three groups had different motives for their actions, and I think this is what makes it difficult to, to um, to under, underpin those reasons and so easy, easy for the media to have distorted that. The protesters were those who demanded du justice. Admittedly, this was an older his death. So this, this actual movement started very peacefully and um, their intentions were for good and for change. Um, their, some of their motives had um, some, some of the same kind of social, political and economic context of the riots in Brixton in 1981. And this is where I kind of to, to, to look at some historical links um, to today's riots. Some of the contexts were actually strikingly familiar and similar to um, the 1981 riots and, and the 2011 riots this year. Then the Conservatives were in power and then they instituted the powers for the police to stop and search people based on um, only a reasonable suspicion that an offence had been committed, which we know as the sus laws. These were applied dis disproportionately um, to the black community um, and caused widespread resentment amongst young black men. Economically, the country was in recession and therefore there was an unease um, amongst ethnic minorities regarding inequality, um, precarity of jobs and mistrust of authority. This generation was also familiar with police operations such as um, Operation Trident in 1998 and Operation Ra Razorback, which specifically um, targeted black people. The motive of the protesters was no different to the 1981 rights, I believe, which broke out to, in many ways due to the same sentiment of us against them, them being the unfair police force who had a vendetta against us, the black British. My only reservations with this argument or this, this side of the debate is that one can be easily blinded by the us against them mentality and allow it to be solely about race. Um, I think it's without doubt much more, a much more complex debate than that. Um, this brings me on to my second group, which sheds a little bit more light on the, on the topic, which were the looters. Um, these were predominantly a, a younger generation um, and a plethora of ethnic groups, which is why I think it, it, it's more than just one specific race. Um, and as I see it, um, the looters were oblivious to some of the wider context in which they acted, unfortunately. I think this group was the most detrimental to the riots outcome and the treatment by the government and the media. 
Yet, they reinforce an override, overriding sentiment of frustration and injustice, and therefore we cannot ignore them. Um, I think that's why I would slightly disagree with, um, with, with Michael saying that they didn't have a political motive. Although it was kind of thwarted by some of their maybe consumerist values, um, they did have a context in which they were reacting. Um, for example, that a bookshop wasn't looted, but a JD Sports um, and technology giants were, doesn't show that the youth involved were uneducated, but is, is a comment on a kind of sad consumerist, materialistic um, society, which informs one's social status and identity. The lack of integrity and responsibility for their own communities, since many actually looted from their, from their own areas, um, highlights how disjointed London is. Um, and it, for me, it, it's not about class, there were, there were rich kids looting. It's not about uneducated and ill-mannered youth. Olympic ambassadors were amongst some of the, those arrested for looting. And it's not just a sentiment in London, right, spread across the UK. Um, the third group, which I'll just kind of quickly mill over, I didn't really go into much detail on them, were the rioters who had the same intentions as the protesters, i.e. peaceful ones, but their, their way of dealing with them or the way of demonstrating was in a more aggressive manner. The riots, um, which escalated in the face of the, the rising tuition fees, in my opinion, also commented, comment on a frustrated youth who feel under, undermined and underwhelmed by government promises and, and failures. The removal of financial support, like the EMA, the Aim Higher initiative, and reduction in funding um, of local youth groups have aggravated the situation. Application to attend colleges have dropped, and unemployment rates are the worst since 1994 at 2.57 million. This is what the UK government failed to address in light of the riots. The bubbling frustration at the current uh, climate of precarity, injustice and alienation. The riots were essentially a voice that needed to be heard. Maybe it was shouted where it could have been spoken, but the violence and widespread, widespread anger shows that this generation felt it could not do otherwise to be heard. So how do we listen now and address the issue? Everyone, I think, needs to stop believing the riots are over. The sentiments behind it have not simply gone away and could easily resurface at any time. We also need to stop believing that the riot, um, or oh, that the looting was the main underlying issue and cause. For me, some of the key issues um, that lie beneath the surface of the riots go beyond the shooting and looting. Um, some, of the, some of the key issues for me are police brutality, um, lack, of um, lack of or reduction of funding for youth projects, um, ostracization, a mythification of um, what the black youth stand for and what the youth in general stands for and stigmatization of the youth. The accessibility of education, um, this is a basic human right and um, it's being made increasingly commercialized um, and elitist. And um, individualism and identity within and versus the community. And once we've addressed these issues, I feel that we can be, begin to understand the rights and, and work towards solving them. So thank you.